Hey, uh, Chris, what do you think the most important aspect of a piece of furniture is? Most important is probably the overall shape and proportions. And what would you say your favorite aspect of a piece of furniture is? My favorite's probably like the little details. I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what this video is about, the little details in furniture. Right, so we're gonna focus on three edge details that we use pretty frequently that you can implement into your projects to help take them to the next level. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's almost like we script this stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why people think that, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, why people think that we script this stuff, we, we don't. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's like most of the time it's just off the top of our head, off the cuff, really. Right, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say, so let's, let's just start it. Okay, let's start with an edge detail that I've been using a lot lately, and it's what I've been calling a thumbnail profile. Uh. In a very simple way, it's rounding the edge of a piece to create a softer look and feel, while still maintaining a sharp line where the edge meets the face. I've used it on chair legs, table legs, even a fireplace mantle I made recently, and I feel like it adds a nice detail that's both subtle and unique. So let's talk about how to get this done. There are a few different ways to achieve this look, both with hand tools and power tools. The quietest way would definitely be to use hand planes to finesse the shape along an edge. Very relaxing and a pretty good result, but a little slow for my liking. If you're looking to speed things up, and honestly do it the easier way, a router and some router bits is my preferred method. I'm pretty sure there are router bits specifically made for this task, but the way I like to do it is with a big roundover bit. This one is a three quarter inch radius. It's pretty simple in that it's basically the same as doing any other roundover, except I never lower the router bit low enough to actually take a full roundover cut. And ideally, I would lower the bit so that the blade is just cutting to the center line of the edge of the workpiece. What this does is use the lower portion of the bit to curve the edge, while the top section is not low enough to cut. And this leaves a sharp line at the corner of the piece. By doing this on both sides of the workpiece, I end up with a nicely rounded edge, but still maintain a sharp line between that edge and the face. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a technique I've come to really like using, and I've used it on all sorts of different pieces. I remember when I first started making nicer pieces of furniture, and if it still had sharp edges, it would almost look unfinished to me. So I'd grab my quarter inch roundover bit and go to town. What you working on, Sean? I'm just gonna put a roundover on all the edges of my, on the piece of furniture I'm making. It's gonna, I think it's gonna look really sweet, man. Oh, yeah. So it was really a nice compromise to start using this thumbnail profile. To me, it has the softness of a roundover while still maintaining the crispness of a sharp edge. Okay, of the three edge details that we're talking about in this video, this is the one that definitely wins the award for least likely to have somebody rub their hand along and comment on the beauty of. That said, it definitely contributes to the look and feeling of a piece quite a bit, and that is the steep undercut bevel. Now, what's more likely is this detail is gonna contribute to somebody commenting on how angular your piece is or that they like the floating light quality of your top. And speaking of that, that's where you're gonna be using a detail like this like 98% of the time. And I say 98 just because I'm non-committal, it's really more like 100%. Okay, so what do I mean by a steep undercut bevel? And I guess I would draw the line at anything more acute than 45 degrees. Now, I'm sure that there's a bunch of different ways that you can cut a detail like this. That said, there's really two ways that we do it. And the first that we're gonna cover is with the table saw, and then we're gonna show you how to do it with a router. So for a medium sized piece, you could probably bevel all four edges with just a tall auxiliary fence. But let's just assume that you're working on a top similar in size to what we made in our spider coffee table plans, which used both approaches. That way you can see it all. So we're gonna start off by picking a bevel angle. So let's just say that we want it to be 15 degrees. 
Easy enough, we'll set our blade and lock it down. Then to make our cuts along the two long edges of the table, we can use the tall auxiliary fence. So this is just a little jig that you can clamp onto your fence and that gives you a little more height to put pressure against and help keep your piece from wobbling. The other thing that you're definitely gonna want when cutting this way is an outfeed table the same height as your table saw, and that's because it's gonna get really front heavy towards the end of the cut. So we can repeat this for both long edges of our top, but for the ends, it's gonna be way too much material in the air to try to balance and keep from tilting. So we're gonna use this simple jig that you can see coming together in this animation. Basically, it's a U-shaped cradle that slides along your table saw's fence with a large face attached to it to support the workpiece and that you can clamp to. Then to make those two cuts, we just reposition our fence so that the blade starts hitting right where the flat spot on the edge of the table is and then we can make those two cuts. Now you're almost certainly gonna get some burning when you cut your pieces this way, but it's nothing that a little sanding won't take care of. And the other thing that I'll say is that these kinds of cuts can get a little hairy, so if you're not comfortable making them, or if you don't have the proper setup to make them, definitely don't do it. You have to go about it safely, and you have to feel confident going in. Okay, so there's two main scenarios that'll have us opting for a router instead of a table saw. And those are whenever the piece is so big that it would just be impossible to take it over to the table saw, or whenever there's an arc that you're trying to cut, which again would make it pretty much impossible to do on a table saw. But before we show that, let's take a minute to thank our sponsor for this video. Hey, thanks Chris. So today's video is sponsored by Policy Genius. If you haven't heard of them, Policy Genius is an online insurance marketplace that can help you get personalized insurance quotes from top companies in minutes. And by doing this, you can save 50% or more by comparing your life insurance quotes with Policy Genius. And who doesn't love a little extra cash? I'll be honest, life insurance hasn't been something that I'd ever thought much about, but with a few life changes happening this year and probably some more to come, it's become apparent that life insurance is something that I should actually very much be thinking about. So with Policy Genius, I was able to go online and quickly compare multiple insurance quotes with a few clicks of my mouse. And one of the best parts, in my opinion, is that the Policy Genius team handles all of the paperwork, scheduling, and negotiating with the insurance company on your behalf for free. So if you've been considering a new life insurance policy, or even if you just wanna see if you can get a better deal on the one you already have, you could be saving $1,300 or more per year by using Policy Genius to compare insurance policies. Then visit policygenius.com slash four eyes to shop the market and start saving today. All right, thanks Policy Genius. Chris, tell us about those bevels. Okay, so by far the simplest way to do this would be to get a bit that cuts out a steeper bevel than a standard chamfer bit. The downsides here would be that they're kind of hard to find and probably pretty expensive, and they also lock you into one specific angle. That said, if you can find one that ticks all of your boxes, this is definitely the easiest way to do it with a router. The other way that you can do it with a router is by making a jig, and this is probably the most complex of all the approaches. But this is what we did when we made our dining table, and we go over the exact specifics of the jig in that plan for making the cut at the angle that we wanted, but in a more general sense, to adapt it to any angle you'd wanna cut, the basic concept is to create a platform with a center channel cut out so that the router bit can hang below the platform. There are then some angled supports holding the platform at the desired bevel angle and rails along the edge of the platform to keep the router in place. The bottom edge of the jig is gonna hang beyond the edge of the table far enough so that the router bit can cut the entire width of the bevel and then there's a fence so that the router doesn't slide off. Then on the underside of the bottom of the jig, we have two blocks which act as an edge guide. All right, so with your jig in hand, now you're gonna have to take a lot of passes since this is gonna be a pretty heavy cut. And the main thing to pay attention to is keeping good pressure on the flat underside of the tabletop. That way the jig doesn't rock and give you a bad cut. And you're also not gonna be able to get all the way to the corners, so you're gonna have to shape those manually to match the profile. Okay, one other approach that you can technically take, but it's gonna be a really long process, is to essentially cut a stair step pattern all the way around the perimeter of your piece to remove the bulk of your material and then sand it all smooth. So I actually did this as a test to see if it was possible, but it takes a long time. 
So if you're dead set on having this detail, building the jig is honestly faster than the time that you're gonna spend taking like 80 laps around your piece making stair steps, and then the hours that you're gonna spend sanding it smooth. And at the end of the day, you can get a fairly similar look on a lot of pieces with just a normal 45 degree chamfer bit, which significantly simplifies things, whether you're using a table saw or a router. But that said, if you do wanna go for this look, now you know how we do it. Okay, so we have the thumbnail profile, the steep bevel, and last but certainly not least, I'm gonna talk about the tapered chamfer, or at least that's what I'm gonna call it. This is a detail that, while subtle, might actually get a few people to look at it and wonder how you did it. Maybe even some non-woodworkers if you're lucky. I've used this detail on a handful of pieces. This bar stool and this dining chair were both places where I felt like it fit really nicely. And it's one of those things that certainly doesn't work on everything, but when you find a spot for it, it can really be a nice touch. So as far as actually cutting these bevels, there are a couple options. And my preferred method is to use a table saw, though a router and a chamfer bit could be used as well, which I'll show in a couple minutes. But for cutting this on a table saw, you're gonna need a few things. First and foremost, you're gonna need a table saw. On top of that, you're gonna need a table saw sled, a couple clamps, and a strong desire to cut a tapered chamfer. Oh boy, do I wanna cut a tapered chamfer. So with all of that pulled together, let's get cutting. Actually, first let's get marking. So when I cut one of these tapers, it always helps for me to mark everything out first to visualize what I'm gonna cut. So I'll mark the start and stop points of the cut, as well as the bevel angle, and with this in hand, I can see exactly where my cut will need to be made, and I can also start setting up a sled. This table saw sled is pretty similar to the normal sleds that I use when cutting things like joint faces on furniture parts. The only difference for this is that I'm going to angle the blade as well. So the first step when making a new sled is to always cut a clean edge on your piece of plywood or MDF or whatever you're using, and we're gonna do exactly that but again, this time we're gonna start with our blade to our desired angle. With the sled edge cut, we now have a reference edge to line our piece up to, so we can use our actual workpiece with the marks we just added and line everything up to that edge. With that in place, and you can clamp this to the sled for a little extra security, we can add the sled fence, which will keep our piece at the correct angle while cutting. I find this approach to give me the best results, and once you have it figured out, it's pretty easy. The other way to do this is with a router, and this method makes a lot of sense on bigger pieces that might be too large for a table saw sled. For this, all you'll really need is a straight edge, a chamfer bit, and some clamps. It's essentially the same approach. Mark your tapered bevel on your workpiece, then line up the straight edge to those marks. The main limitation here is that your bevel angle is dictated by the router bit that you have, whereas with a table saw, the angle options are limitless. So with the straight edge clamped to the workpiece, we can set the router bit to the depth we want and prepare to make the cut. Depending on how big you're going, you might wanna take a few shallower passes before going full depth. So there you go, two methods to essentially land at the same result. A nice subtle detail that might get a few people asking how you were able to pull that off, and that's always a pretty nice feeling. All right, well, hopefully this gave you some ideas for things that you can implement into your projects to help take them to the next level. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and make sure to like and subscribe. I'm Chris Salamone, and as usual, I stink and Sean is really cool.